Okay. Hi, everyone. Okay, I... Hope you missed me. <laughs> hope you had a good time at, on adventures of your own. Um... Maybe you enjoyed my book review. I don't know. Anyway, this is a traditional episode today. And we will be talking about Spider-Man. 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 And Spider-Man. Okay. These go in order, so I'm gonna go in order. This was really, really good. This was really, really, really good, but, um... We didn't get to see how Mayday Parker ended up in the Mysterio thing, and I know I'm not, I know I'm not on time when it comes to this. Everybody's read it already, but again, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. one of my favorite characters, Mayday, becomes like this important prophetical figure. I, I enjoyed that. It would be the, akin to finding out that Bart was the key to the Speed Force all along for DC fans. Because Bart's my favorite DC character. Um. So, yeah. I like finding out that Mary Jane and Spider-Man's relationship were like was like destined to happen that no matter what Peter and MJ's relationship ends up happening no matter what you throw at it or what Doc Ock does the next week um yeah I didn't really, I liked Kindred, but I didn't really, um, pick up the rest of the issues leading up to this, so, um, yeah, there you go, but Kindred kind of seemed kind of weak, pardon me, weak sauce. But th that's just me. <laughs> and correcting that big mistake that that Harry and I mean Norman Harry cloned him and Norman is the father technically. Norman and Harry's. Why do I keep wanting to involve Harry? Norman and Gwen Stacy's Ill illegitimate love children were like kindred. I, I like that they managed to correct that mistake. That they were just clones the whole time, and that Harry cloned them. There you go. That's right. Yeah, um, I like that they had clone deterioration, that they, that she told, he told them that she would have been their mother, Gwen would have been their mother regardless, if they would have needed it, um, anyway. Anyway. 
I understood the game they were playing with Doctor Strange and Mephisto, even though I hadn't, again, picked up anything prior. The last Spider-Man I picked up was on Free Comic Book Day, and that was one of the only Free Comic Book Day ones I've read so far. But yeah, I, I do remember reading it. Come to think of it, it was Free Comic Book Day of last year, where, where the guy that flings boomerangs is now his roommate, which, that gets addressed in here, too. I was like, hey, that's still happening! Okay. Um, I like that. It was a nice big book. I have a lot to say about this one, but I gotta move on to other books. I really liked it. Good job, guys. Okay. Um. Now, on to Ben Riley actually becoming Spider-Man. Ben becomes Spider-Man because of a trademark issue, kind of like in real life, how... Yeah, there's a whole legal thing going on with him right now. And the the if Marvel's not careful, it will become public. Spider-Man will become public domain. If only for a week. Okay. But um Peter gets wounded in this one. Big battle. You've seen it all happen. I'm sure other channels have covered it, to, but I really like this one because Ben Riley is my favorite Spider-Man. No if ands, or buts about it. He is the Spider-Man I remember. He is the Spider-Man that, that I originally picked up and it, it got me into comics. Yeah. You always remember your first comic. And Ben was my first comic. Him and Spider Boy from the the um Animalgam universe. I didn't know what the Animalgam universe was at the time, but that's a that's a whole different thing. Yeah. Um I liked that it fills it, it fills in the gap between him coming back and him him that is to say Ben being A clone that was kind of covered in in this in this book. The classic Spider-Man, Ben Riley. Anyway, I, I liked how it it kind of brings you up to speed. And I totally forgot the name of his girlfriend because I was like six when when he was originally Spider-Man. So, that's why I was so pumped to see him back again. I still think off-panel, he's like friends with Mayday Parker, too. I think that Mayday Parker and him probably end up training in some reality. Like, how B Batman trained Terry. I, I think, I don't know for sure, but I think that that could be what they're leading up to. I don't pick, I don't normally pick up Spider-Man, but this was definitely worth it. Now, I'm missing the next issue, 
but I've been told Peter's just in a coma. He's not dead, because if you if you finish this one, you kind of get the impression, that, oh, Peter is dead, and Ben's going to be the permanent Spider-Man forever. But, um, yeah. You can't trust those cliffhangers. In this one, 77. For example, it, it ends on a cliffhanger with My Michael Morpheus. They want you to think Ben Riley is going to be a vampire, and we know that's not going to happen. They got at least till 80. I think it tells you till 80 in, in the very beginning of this. Beyond Era. I wouldn't be surprised if Ben Riley ends up being the Spider-Man for quite a while, like till 800. Like, they set him up for a big story. It wouldn't, it wouldn't amaze me at all. But that's just me being a fanboy. What I liked about it was that you got to see his interactions with like Misty Knight and the other members of whoever the Beyond Corporation employs. I don't, I didn't fully get who the white lady was supposed to be, but I did like the fighting action. I like the words. I mean, the pictures, just like Bart Simpson says to Alan Moore in that one. In that one episode of The Simpsons, where he says, "You like that I make your your favorite superhero not radioactive." Yeah, yeah, it was cool to see. Anyway, um, and I was able to point out to Mom later in this one. that the lady that runs the Ravencroft Institute and actually attempts to help him in this, this thing that's like a flashback between the two issue, issues, but it's like years ago, it opens, says years ago, it takes place in the time where he, Ben's original run of Spider-Man. But the lady ends up being his therapist and helping him out in this one. So. And it's the same... Institute that Carnage and the Joker escape from in Car Spider Man. I almost said Carnage Joker, Spider Man, Batman. But yeah, it was really cool in that regard. Um, throwing a lot of nerd terms at you. But talking about this one. There we go. Talking about this one, the cover can't be trusted either. You think there's going to be Doc Ock in it? He doesn't appear once. Whoever he's talking to here is... Uh, my best guess would be Morpheus. I really don't have a clue. So, yeah. Um...
Again, the Beyond run so far has been really, really good. I just wonder, where is Kane? Where is Kane Parker? Kane, the, the quote, I'm not even going to say, quote, evil, because he's not evil. He's, he's Ben's brother, but he is also the guy that briefly became Spider-Man till he left Las Vegas, and yeah, my thought is where is Kane? You can see my thoughts on those books here on the channel, but where is Kane? Not, oh my god, is Ben going to make it? Like I said, I expect him to, he did that well with Spider-Man that, um, I expect Ben to be Spider-Man at least till 800, and then they're gonna kill him off or blow him up or suck him through a time vortex. You know, something crazy. You gotta watch out for those time vortexes, kids. Okay. Now on to the... Now on to the last book in the review. The classic Spider-Man where I'm not quite sure where it takes place in time. And when I say that, keep in mind everything I've said, that, that I've, I've pretty much kept track of every era of Ben Riley Spider-Man, to the extent where I enjoy him more than I do regular Peter Parker. <laughs> um, I do like that he runs into Jonah in the beginning. It cracked me up. I found it to be funny. And I do like that he runs into who he runs into at the end. A classic Spider-Man villain. It's a shame this is only going to be seven issues. Um, and they said it takes place after Spider Peter Parker 75, but that took place a long time ago, and I'm going to need more of a refresher than that. And it will be interesting to see how they tie all three of those things in together. I mean, him working for the Beyond Corporation. Him almost getting bit by Morpheus. And him needing that lady's help in the present time. I just thought of something. Um, Ma, do you think that, that that guy he met in the bar is that killer from this book? You know, the one that's going around killing people? Okay, Mom just threw blew my theory out of the water. You're right. But, I could be wrong. I mean, it could be the same person. Yeah. I don't know. They have him doing a, a killer, or or maybe that killer's going to survive in the present time, and that's how they're going to tie the character. That's how they're going to tie the characters and timeline together. Yeah. Anyway. All, all three very good books. Can't wait. Wait to see how it's all tied together. That was a bit of speculation there, folks. That and the May Day thing, that I think May Day is going to get brought into the Ben Riley toward the end. Um, I know I'm behind when it comes to Spider-Man, but I, I would like to start picking it up eventually again. So maybe when it's all finished, 
I don't know if it's worth putting on my box because if um if it didn't come out the way it does, I mean it doesn't come out once a month. It comes out weekly. If it came out once a month again, I would pick it up in a heartbeat. The story is that good. But I'm enjoying crossover a bit more. So there's that. Um But you guys can feel free to update me on what's going on with Ben Riley and if I should pick up these issues before eight hundred. I will I will definitely be picking up the eight hundredth issue. Yeah. See what happens. <sighs> that that is that's the end. Bob out. Yeah, that's the end. Feel like I did a lot of stuttering.